to start at the start of time. My name is Ian Robinson. My role of the organisation is I'm the managing director and owner of that since it commenced in 1993. We're guessing ages now. To my right is Taylor Well. I uh, heavily involved in the organisation, running programs, working with students and organised <coughs> staff. Our role is very simple here this evening. It's to inform you about how we conduct the adventurous journey component of Jupiter. We have an order of events that we work through. Uh, firstly, throughout we'll talk about Southbound Adventures. We'll talk about the Duke of Edinburgh program in detail. We'll talk about gear, just to my right here, not all the gear, not on our bowls and spoons, just the highlights. On the training day, the girls will go through every piece of gear. We'll talk about medical information, the online medical form, and parents, what encompasses the entire talk, and that's why it's a parent talk, is risk management procedures, what we have in place. Now parents, first and foremost, um, Southbound Adventures, we don't just do Duke of Edinburgh. We are an outdoor education company, that's part of our schedule of events and work. Um, being an outdoor education company, we have a vision, and quite simply, we look to inspire your children. How do we go about it? Well, first of all, I'm a, a past primary school PE teacher, trainer, and potential going to professional sporting career, and I chose outdoor education. So combining all, we have an adventurous um, environment out in Australia, and adventurous activities, amazing staff, amazing equipment. And by doing that, we organise experiences for your daughter. To narrow it down, that's all we do as a company, organise experiences where they learn. So looking to inspire, we want to inspire them, because we're part of the school's um, team here where we're getting them ready for time away from school. They leave year 12 and it's up to them. We're just a part of that organisation. Second that, we care. I'm a parent, I heard the parent conversation outside, Jeff. Arctic monkeys and going to concerts and things you don't want to give when your daughter's in the back seat. And my daughter's getting there, so I don't look forward to that. But in regards to caring, um, you, you're our clients. And so that being the case, we're going to exceed your expectations and we want the best for your children. So Southbound Adventures Origins, yeah, we started back in 1993. Uh, I, I just caught up with a very dear friend, Mary Ann Brogan, who came out, a uh, team member here at the school, who I took out on a program from, uh, in Tasmania and I've known her for now 20 plus years. So my time working in the private schools has been since 1993. The Sydney schools, Central Coast, Southern Tablelands, and a number of international schools as well. My time working Australia, uh, the US, New Zealand, and so on. So it's quite vast, I love my job, it's never dull, as long as the weather's good. The style of programs that we conduct, a lot of Duke of Edinburgh, you love it. Uh, I think Glenn and I have got great jobs, because the students, they sign up, they want to do it. Right? And for parents, you want them to do it because it looks good on their resume. As an employer, that's half a joke there. As an employer, uh, it's favourable because your children are giving up their time, they're showing commitment, they're showing initiative. With any people who turn up on their resume and it's got Duke of Edinburgh on it, that they'll be getting an interview for sure. It's very favourable this day and age in employing young people. Uh, the other programs we run parents, outdoor education programs from a single day to 11 days, uh, year three students through year 12, in Tasmania, New Zealand, a little bit of Fiji, and a lot of New South Wales. We enjoy our job. Very cliche, but our philosophy, we aim to make a difference. We see change in young people. Parents, accreditation, big question. Um, we have organisational accreditation. We're the first company in, in Australia to attain that. When it commenced in 2003, we renew it every three to four years. We've, we have been successful on every occasion, of course. We have a desk audit, we must pass and go to a field audit. What we say we're doing and matches with our team and our clients. We have our waterways hire and drive license. Every single canoe, sea kite, watercraft you see out there being hired, it should have a number on it. Try and find one that doesn't. So we have everything licensed, our big canoes, our sea kayaks, our, uh, our canoes. So they're all licensed. Thirdly, our national parks eco pass for all the national parks we operate in. Also our state forest license, uh, or our council licenses. I can assure you now, parents, every man and his dog knows when we're running a trip. In notifying everyone now, it's 90% administration and getting ready for trips, and it's actually 10% actually going out and doing it these days. It's heavily regulated. We manage that ourselves. Parents, in 90 seconds, I've described about 20 years of work behind the scenes. That's what happens before every trip. So parents, this is the journey training day. It's very convenient. We make it easy for you, and ideally the school. We run it here. Uh, it'll be on a Friday. The girls love that. I don't know if I can say that, but it's on a Friday. We're appreciative of that as well. The girls come, and as Glenn noted, it is, it is mandatory and part of the Duke of Edinburgh scheme, and we cannot endorse this enough. If your daughter has a great start on training day, learns all the appropriate skills, and the theory components, <coughs> they 
they'll enjoy their first trip. We are not the organisation that wants to, we just don't accept students who turn up the morning of a trip, uh, fill in a couple of bits of paper, that's your training, away you go. Bit of a smile there, Glenn. So we have a full training day and they're well prepared and that sets them up for bronze, silver and gold. So on the training day, if we have, um, this is the board, I think about five to six groups at this stage, mm -hmm. they're about still to be finalised, we'll have uh, six southbound team members and they'll come and run each component. And I'll go through that now. We're and not going to do camps like set up. For the girls, we are now developing the team. We are developing the team. Being an education company, when your girls come away with us, it's not just Duke of Edinburgh. Two things set us apart from every other organisation. One, as a company, our team members, our staff, they'll immerse ourselves within the group. They want to be part of the team. They'll, they'll do chores and jobs with the girls, but they're part of the group. We're not the organisation who goes out, they paddle in front, we go to the campsite, we camp there, the girls camp over there and do what they want, rather we're with the group. We talk, we discuss, we share the experiences of the day. Second to that, what I'm passionate about is that our team members, being an education company, they're going to review every day. It's the personal development side. Wanting to learn more about themselves, others within the group, what they learn in that two days, they come back and make parallels to their normal lives. We're adamant about that in developing your daughter's well-being and preparation for future years. So for me now, the Taylor also, we've seen students start at bronze and we've taken them right through to gold. That's a total of six trips. And as Glenn said, just be careful here, Glenn, when they get the gold, the guides do nothing. Remember the parents are paying us to do that. So at the gold trip, carefully supervised. Carefully supervised, thank you. So at the gold trip, it's such a reward for us seeing the girls manage the whole trip. Being confident, capable, whether it's rainy, windy, uh, whatever conditions, that is the reward for us. And the skills they learn there, they take to their normal lives. I can assure you now, seeing that happen is, is a great reward. So parents on the training day, they're going to go through a roster of their little group, 14, 15 students, divided, divided in groups of three or four, and they all have jobs. It's like developing and organising their community. They're going to be cooking. This is seemingly the most dangerous part of Duke of Edinburgh. For the reason of how they cook. Now for the girls, you're going to find the girls who are master chefs. And there's others who are great cooking the microwave. So regardless, the girls for cooking, they will need to organise their own menu. So they'll do menu design with the Southbound team. Uh, we'll give them... Uh, suggestions of food. They cannot live on chocolate two minute noodles for two days. That's not acceptable. Rather we talk about nutritious food. They'll design a menu. They will need to shop for that food. That's an experience in itself. They'll buy enough food for a five day program. <laughs> They're only going out really for a morning tea, lunch, <coughs> afternoon tea, dinner, breakfast, morning tea, lunch. That's all they need. But it's experiential learning at its best. We see some amazing meals created. <laughs> Parents, when we uh, cook on the stoves, uh, they're methane burning stoves. We are very cautious and careful. There is a cooking circle supervised by the Southbound team members, two with each group, a visiting teacher from the school, three adults of those 14 students. We start together as a group cooking, food and safety, hygiene. We are very cautious and careful. Nutritious food. We do ask the girls to abide by a nut free policy when they come away also. That is uh, reminded many times on the train. Healthy food. We're a healthy and nutritious company. We pride ourselves having energy foods for the expedition. Parents, gear and equipment, just going to touch on it tonight, but on the training day, we'll go through every single piece of gear for your girls. We are preparing your daughters for the worst possible weather, and we are praying for blue sky and the winds on their back. We like that too. Yes, we like them coming out. Uh, but we need to prepare them for the worst. So, poly rain jacket, so on. Tents and packs on the canoeing expedition they are doing. They will not need a pack, rather just a soft sports bag. We'll teach them about that. We'll teach them how to waterproof with their tents. Now, they're going to need to bring their own tent from home. Do not be concerned. Historically, over 20 years now, there's already a nod. Have you got a tent, girls? Yeah. Use order on. Good girls. OK, there's always one tent at home somewhere. What we don't want is the 45-year-old Paddy Cullen tent that when you put it up, it's going to combust. Also, if you're sharing a tent, girls, and you're splitting it, make sure someone brings the poles and doesn't leave them at home. Just a reminder, that's happened also. Yeah, there's a few interesting tents to come away. My favourite tent is the 12-person Taj Mahal. <laughs> all the girls convinced me that this is a great idea. We're all going to stay in the tent together. No sleep. So anyway, but mind you, that's their choice. Experiential learning at its best, but there is a tent at home. Check it, set up in the backyard before they come away. It's an adventure. They love it. It's a whole lot of 
always wait for the, the, rea the reaction from Kira Billy here. Some parents it is. You laugh. That sums up Kira Billy parents. I love it. The transport here, it's, it's a thank you. For some of the transport, the school will organise transport in conjunction with South Adventist to help you there. On other occasions when they get the silver gold, you'll be involved in getting your daughters to the start. You will endure a sleepover the night before of five or six girls. Uh, but in getting there, please check directions. We <coughs> uh, call 20 hours, we can assist you. But just knowing where you're going and the pick up points. Parents also navigation, we'll go through a navigation plan on the training day. So parents, over that training day, we go through in detail. They have templates they fill out. They rotate through different team leaders. They learn all the skills. Uh, they have all their information organised at the end. They are ready to go. Parents, we need to go through modes of transport. For this at Loretto Kirribilli, we are canoeing. Uh, the canoes you use are two-person bush ranger or two-person Winona canoes. Uh, they are very stable, very sturdy, very difficult to capsize. However, the Loretta girls do challenge that theory. <laughs> First, wet weather pit. All the pits are generally sharp blue sky, but it can rain out there and it's okay to go on a trip. They bring the right gear away. Sometimes for the groups that well, I've taken out, um, I've had trips where I've had eight days of snow and wind and sleet, and it's singly the most memorable trip that I've been on and most memorable for the girls. <coughs> Actually, one of the girls who was an Apostle student became a teacher here and still talks about it. So, the elements make it more exciting. We watch the weather carefully. With the right equipment, they can continue. For the girls, they'll start at Bronze in our, uh, our two-person canoes. They'll be learning all the skills, both paddling at the bow and the stern, learning the skills of both. When they get the silver and gold, uh, they stay in the same mode of transport they choose. We've got our big canoes. They are our 14 seater canoes we've imported from Canada. They're the only two in the country. Great challenge getting them here. You should see our trailer, or daunting. But for the girls, it's a, it's a craft where they must work together. They put all their expedition gear in the middle and it's an amazing journey for them. So we, we offer that as a bonus when they get to silver and gold if they continue. Nice blue sky picture, by the way. <laughs> Uh, some areas you operate in, the Hawks River. It's, it's right on your doorstep. We see some amazing scenery there. Also operate down in Kangaroo Valley. If you're not, if you've been there, one of my favourite places between Mandela Pondage and Tallow Dam. Mile Lakes. It's generally a place where we do our gold trips. Uh, the Tea Gardens River. I've often seen the dolphins heading up there from the ocean. And they're the general areas we can know. Parents, when they are out on a trip with us, just a little bit of risk management now, we paddle as a group. It is not a race, but don't say we'll meet you at the campsite. In absolute perfect weather, we paddle within 50 metres. In any inclement weather, we're, we're into about 20 metres, in the 15 metres, from uh, Tyler and Charlie to our leader. They have two qualified Southbound team leaders with every group and a visiting teacher, all parents. Parents are more than welcome to come away. Some of them no, I'm not coming. Let's put a brave face on and look at me. Uh, but parents are more than welcome. We cook your meal, we set up your tent, organise a thermos for you, an outdoor chair. Is that a cell? Cook your meal. Light conversation. Uh, I think the meeting's being had. The, parent, uh, the teachers are coming, so I'm going to go away. Well, so here we go. We've had some great parents come away. Uh, they book the trip in with work. They go on a trip with their daughter. The next thing is to usher daughter if you're allowed to come away. <laughs> Who knows? I'm there. Okay. So parents, um, it is well qualified, well supervised there. So just, um, we're going to move on to gear now with our time. Uh, Taylor's going to assist me now. We're just going to talk about some of the highlights of gear. Uh, in us coming to see you now, in us meeting with your children, on that Friday coming up, it's, it's a big part of risk management. By you knowing more information, your daughters are safer, are better prepared, and we have a safer trip. If it's raining out there and your daughter pulls out a garbage bag with holes in it, puts on as a rain jacket, I just guilt tripped everybody then, but I've seen it happen. We've seen some funny rain jackets come out. We've seen shoes come out, and we've had students convince us that their other boots are waterproof. <coughs> so we're going to start with the number one item that needs to be prepared. And organised for Alright, like, like Ian said before, garbage bag, yeah, it's quite fashionable, but it doesn't have, doesn't really help with you to dry and warm. Okay, so the main thing that you're looking for is you really want a nice sturdy material. Okay, it's really warm, keeps you warm, a hood, and also you want the rain jacket to come down to your side. So you think that's probably the best. Okay, you see some that come all the way up here, and yeah, but keep the top half warm, but nice and soaking from on the tips down. 
so that's um, that's layer one, cuts out wind and rain. Uh, the next is comfort at night. They want to have a good night's sleep. Now we're generally going in the time period now where we're moving into winter. For them to bring away their Dora the Explorer sleeping bag. Anyone got one? No, okay, it's probably Justin Bieber now, I'm not sure. But they need a down, ideally a down filled sleeping bag. There's some very good synthetic bags, but as guides, we'll take a down filled sleeping bag out. If you're unsure the first trip, you can make it warmer by having a silk liner or a fleece liner on the inside. They can hop in that first, that's an option. And also make it warmer by wearing thermal pants, thermal top, the beanie, their gloves, and that just increases the warmth. So ideally it fits in this size bag, it just needs to fit in their bag and in the canoe. So sleeping well at night. Parents, I don't know if you've camped out before, if you've woken up before, sleep bag at 2.30 in the morning, but it's chilled, you cannot warm up. This is the probably the equal number of options uh, item next to the range A so good sleep. We touched on it just before. Uh, they are doing canoeing, so the ideal bag to take with them would be a soft uh, duffel bag or soft, uh, soft sports bag. There's one, you see this one's got wheels, this one's fine as well. Okay, we don't recommend the big hard ones that you wheel around everywhere. Okay, but uh, the soft one is perfect to put in all items, uh, for instance, you know, sleep bags and everything like that. Uh, and parents are just their, their warm jumper. If I ask the girls to all bring away their favourite hoodie, they've all got one. It's cotton based. It's the worst thing you can buy. Rather, the best material is Polytech or fleece, equivalent to a woolen jumper. Uh, Polytech and fleece and material now, this day and age, is quite affordable. We always recommend a dark colour so it always looks clean for many days. Uh, zip down the front, uh, zippered pockets to get their hands warm. Uh, that is the ideal jumper. Of course, a few other things as well, water bottles. Okay, hydration is very important when you're out there, you're doing a little bit of extra activities, and we do recommend, <coughs> we do ask that you bring at least two litres minimum uh, in a water bottle that looks a little bit like this. You can bring a camel pack, okay, which is another example you see, which is perfect when you're canoeing, you just got this on the back of you, okay, which both this holds about 1.5 litres, um, so two litres is, is fantastic to have when you're out there in hydration. Uh, safety at night, we're not being patronising and holding up torches. But we, I don't know, we can't make it mandatory, but we're strongly pressing that they have a head torch. It's all packaged stuff now. Head torch has elastic around the head, light at the front, halogen glow, and when they're cooking on the stoves, it's both hands free. Not their torch under their neck. Uh, also, it's easy to find things lost in their tent. And also, not in wilderness environments, the toilet area is away from the campsite, and the head torch is very handy. It's just the management risk, all our guides, it's compulsory they have head torches. Uh, there's a lot of inexpensive ones out there, so we'd really love to see that from you guys, please. And something you don't need at all is this flash covering. You just don't need it. And in here we have pop-up bowls and plates, just a basic bowl, cup, spoon, and that will be for that cover. Are all of these available for on your website? It's a great lead-in. So can you go to our website? We spoke out some one thing. The only reason we started an online store about 10 years ago because we have so many parent calls talking about gear. And as Glenn knows, there's so many outdoor stores and it depends on what brand they're promoting, depends on what they're going to push on you. We've got to organise all the best gear that we never get returns on, is perfect for our programs. It will last when they leave school for parents for you to use when you travel later. So options. So, you go to a website, all this is listed, um, and again, 20% discount. You get stuck online, you call our office manager, Mel, and she can talk you through the gear and get the stuff. Yeah. Any returns, wrong sizes, there's no dramas there. So parents, we're just going through the highlights of gear. We're not going to bore you with, with all the incidentals of the sunscreen and other things like that. That's all on the list, and the girls go through that on the training day. Parents, something offer too, if there's any gear you're not sure about, the sleeping bag, uh, the soft bag, uh, your rain jacket, please bring it on the training day. You've got six outbound team members who can talk to you about that product. If you're thinking about not buying from us, which is fine, you're in an outdoor store, just duck outside and have a chat to us and we'll advise you as well. We want to make sure your daughter has a right view on truth. It's important. So parents, just moving on to some other matters now. Communications are on the call. We've invested a great deal of money in making sure this is covered. On every trip, about 14 to 15 students, two guides, a teacher or parent from the school, will have a dedicated satellite phone with each group. 
Second to that, I've got a dedicated handheld two-way radio and we have our own private channel which is registered and only we have access to that. We have a staff member, a general, most occasions our general manager, Andrew Banner, who will be on call 24 hours. The first port of call for a family emergency after hours is the school, which Mr. Board, uh, there is a number which is uh, handed out on a note. It's only for emergencies only, school first and then southbound second. But we are there 24 hours behind the scenes. The southbound team, oh, carefully selected, heavily inducted, uh, the most qualified in New South Wales, a minimum certificate for an outdoor recreation or, or degrees or similar. Qualified in wilderness first aid or remote area first aid. That's the people and their qualifications. Second to that, the Southbound Adventures, we have knowledge of the areas. We don't go to any areas blind. We've been going there for 20 years. We know all the private property owners personally. As noted, we have our National Parks licences. It's just the longevity of the organisation and the different types of weather we've seen coming through these venues that sets us apart from others. So vast knowledge. Uh, for the people going out on a trip, our team, they queue up to go on Duke of Edinburgh because the students want to be there. Right, so Duke of Edinburgh is a badge of honour. For our team now, they'll start with the bronze group and they want to keep that group and the group wants to keep those guides going through with them. We do that as best as we possibly can. Prior to going or attending a Southbound program, uh, we invite you to the Southbound Adventures website, okay, which is uh, a place to uh, fill out an online web form. Okay, so use online uh, to southbound.com.au. The okay, first thing what you have to do is to register. Okay, so you're going to click the register button, and it's going to take you to this page. A few things that you do need to fill out okay, is you know, name, uh, you can see it up there, uh, first name, last name, and things like that, and then it's going to send you an email to verify that account. Okay, then you're going to go to the Southbound website again, and then you're going to sign in. Okay, now to activate and to fill in the online menu form, then you're going to follow these steps. So you're going to sign in, this is your personal profile, and you're going to click New and Update Medical Form, which is going to take you to this page. Okay, then down here, Enter Medical Form. Now for these things you will need, uh, this is a two-step process, and the first step is to fill in school title, our participant's ID, and date of birth, and then select the program, which will be uh, to the Duke of through Village Duke of and submit. Okay, then it's going to take you to an in-depth page uh, to fill in some more information. Okay, now you can see on there, it's just an example, so we're going to send to the year 9. Uh, I've got Nick, and down the bottom, uh, I see some more uh, Medicare, private details, and doctors, and things like that. Okay, this is all online, it's secure, and uh, we're going to be taking these med forms on camp with us, so that if we have to access anything, we'll put it all here ready to go. So online, uh, for the next one prior to the program. Uh, parents, a bonus of the medical form is that when your daughter, you first fill in this form and then the do your daughter goes on a second trip, the information's already there. You just need to go back in, scan, everything's fine, press submit, and you're ready to go. Uh, we're trying to avoid all that paper. Is it just the you or do you the Now, with, um, probably with um, Mr. Board here, the school will send home a note, a note giving you instructions and your ID, your reference here at the school, it's specific to the school. Some schools have their, uh, your family name at the school, but they'll indicate to you what that code is. Mr. Board has sent all that information to us, and it's accessed into our system, so we can recognise you directly. So you'll get that information. So parents, at this point, this is my checklist to make sure I've covered all those most topical parent questions that I'd be asking also, or want to hear about. Firstly, um, the South Adventures team and their qualifications. I note, noted their remote area first aid or wilderness first aid. Their certificate for an outdoor recreation. That's through the New South Wales TAFE system or equivalent. And many of them have uh, degrees or diplomas. So carefully chosen and inducted, having knowledge of the areas. The ratios, the largest group size at any time would not reach 15 to uh, meet with the Adventures Activity Standards and, of course, our canoeing guidelines as well, our waterways license. So always having two qualified staff and a visiting teacher or parent from the school. So the ratio is excellent. Communications, our satellite phones and radios. Our distance from medical assistance. Because we go to different areas, we have vast knowledge, for example, where, where all those services are. If we were down at uh, Barrow Waters or the Crosslands venue, we have Galston Medical Centre, we have Hornsby Hospital. Uh, so some, we have uh, all the contacts, all the travel times, from Crosslands, of course, the Medical Centre, 12 minutes. From Crosslands, Hornsby, it's 19 minutes. So they're all being carefully worked out. 
Mind you, in the event of a romantic situation, a rule in contact with is simple. If your daughter will not participate fully in the activity, she has a migraine, she's lying in her tent, she cannot get up, she's not going to be paddling that day, we are calling you. You give us more information how to make it better. Unfortunately, it may need a pick-up, but we'll organise that with you. If your daughter has a splinter, and we've removed it, we've cleaned it, we've taped it, we've blasted the plast, we're not going to call you if that's okay. So I just shared, I'm not condescending, but some parents, so we're just sharing that with you. In the event of anything more serious, parents, I, I do need to know this, we keep you informed, right? We have no hesitation. If you're down, we call for outside services to assist us. What they love about Southbound Adventures, and this doesn't happen regularly at all, make that clear, we have our radios, our private channel, we have our satellite phones, so we're not the company has a little digital phone, uh, a Vodafone or Virgin, whoever it may be, running up the hill and looking for reception. <coughs> okay, so we have our satellite phones, our radios, and even our private uh, iPhone 5s, we have great reception these days. So communications are the most important ones. So you are aware, in the field, with the group, they don't have their satellite phone on 24-7, or their mobiles, because that's just not possible. Rather, they have radio skeds and where they contact their office and ask for weather updates and we update them on the information. That's how it works. Messages, parents, if the trip is running on midweek, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., you are more than welcome to call us and ask how they are going. We are not with them on trip. Rather, we will let you know how the weather's going, we've spoken to the trip, they're up to here, they're going well, they've got the wind on their backs, or had some rain, or whatever it may be. So that's as much as we can bring you up to speed. Messages, you have a different pick-up point for your daughter at the end. We need to get up early. Call our office. If it's anything more urgent, you have a contact number here at the school. Parents insurance, we have our, of course our public liability, minimum 10 million. Uh, documentation comes here at the school every 12 months. It's behind the scenes at our website that the school can access, and they do that, I can assure you, here at Loretto Kirribilli. We're all going to school. So parents, at this point in time, if there's any questions, feel free to ask, but just some thoughts for your daughters Duke of Edinburgh journey. We are work, working very, very hard, along with Glenn and kind of, kind of work together, we want retention. We want the girls, if you want to spend the time with them starting bronze, we want them to continue. Yes, there's hardship, yes, there's extra hours, yes, you're running to events, but I can assure you, as a parent, having a daughter get a gold award um, would, be, would be amazing. So we work hard at assisting and helping, but at the end of the day, Parents, if you need an award as well, because you will, if I can say, you will need to assist them. I know it's self-driven, they organise it themselves, but they're teenagers. And I'm not going to stand up here and say it's all up to them. If you assist them and help them and guide them, that's our jobs, it's ideal to get them through to silver and gold. If they get to the end of silver, it's very unlikely they don't push through to gold. So we're working very hard to get them to the <coughs> Some other trips, in going to gold, we want something to, to be to aim for. We were on trips in New Zealand, occasionally on the Murray River, and Tasmania. Uh, both guiding there, they are highlights. In Tasmania, eight days, seven nights, they can carry all their gear. They can, if they start canoeing, they can change their mode of transport at silver and gold. As long as they, when they're at gold, they do their prac and their tests at the same time. Overland track, eight days, seven nights. Uh, Mary Ann Rogan here at the school, I've completed that with her. Uh, everyone's capable of doing it. On top of Mount Ossa, as a group, Kitchen hut, anyone been to kitchen hut just before Cradle Mountain? Normally you can see the shovel at the top there and that top door, that's where the snow gets to in winter. Great spot. Not selling to many people here at the moment. <laughs> so kitchen hut. Uh, New Zealand, uh, we walk for five days and we see kind for five days in uh, out of Marahau, Abel Tasman National Park. Beautiful thing. Along the coast and sea kind in five days out to a marine reserve around a seal colony. It's an amazing adventure for a teenage girl. One of my favourite stories, I had a parent, who's <coughs> a PA, one of the principals of the schools, her, I took her daughter on a trip a long time ago, and she still says it's the hardest thing she did as a child, but it's most rewarding and most memorable to take her on a trip. So, as I said at the start, as a company, we are creating experiences. We've got a lot of, lot of knowledge on how to do that really well. And some of these trips, at the end of their goal, it's a highlight and something to look forward to. Your should can start considering it. So parents, at this point in time, quick summary, hopefully you'll come up with a tale of myself and the South Bend Adventures team. Uh, you get an idea of our passion, work with young people and making a difference. And we can thank you and congratulate parents because your daughter's about to embark on the Duke of Edinburgh journey. So thank you very much. We're available for questions at the end and call our office anytime. So thank you very much. <coughs>